Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. Today we're doing part three of my half-scale Johnny 5 build from 80s movie Short Circuit. So in the last video about Johnny 5, I printed my half-scale head, which we've got just here. So have a look at parts one and two to find out information about where the CAD files came from and also where the reference pictures and video come from for a full-scale Johnny 5. In fact, pictures taken from the original one used in the movie. So this head was printed on the printer that I've got on the right hand side there, the Lulzbot A0101, which has been working reliably for some time. I've now upgraded to the TAS 3. Uh, the Lulzbot TAS 4 is just out and dual extruders for that will be an option for later this summer, 2014. I've actually already got dual extruders fitted to this printer. So I've got an experimental extruder called a Flexi Dwayley. Um, you see there's two filament feeds here and two spools on the right hand side. One of those is printing in a flexible rubber called Ninja Flex, and the other one has just got standard ABS loaded. And that enables me to make prints which are both flexible and rigid bonded together in one print, or to print in one material or the other. I put up a video a while ago, a couple of weeks now, um, about 3D printing my alien suit, and I showed you how I could print parts with this printer, uh, which are a combination of rigid and flexible. So this has got white, rigid ABS, and flexible red ninja flex to make some sort of tank tracks. Um, another example was the wheel printed in one print with a rubber tire attached. So this is extremely useful for doing robotics, uh, making flexible joints and that sort of thing. So today we're going to be working our way down from the head to the neck and we're going to be making the cylinders which um, allow Johnny Five to tilt his head round, the rotating mechanism, and obviously there's another joint here which is originally a universal joint. Make sure you check out the I want to customise my Johnny 5 toy robot Facebook group for some more examples of people doing life size builds um, and also modifying the toy robots. Um, there's various other information including some reference pictures and various things in the files and photos section. So let's have a look at some CAD. I'm using Autodesk 123D Design which is free software to design all the pieces for this stage. So uh, looking at the reference pictures Underneath the head there is a plate, um, this has the mounting points for the cylinders at the front and the main neck joint. Um, this also appears to be a piece above it which I can't quite make out so I've, I've basically meshed those all into one piece um, which will make it easier to 3D print which is what this extra piece is piggybacked on the top. Um, I guess that's just for the spacing so that things are the right height. So the neck joint itself is going to be simply put um, this plate with a hole in which fits underneath the upper plate. And also this piece which is coloured red, it's going to be printed in black Ninja Flex in fact. And that's going to make um, basically a rubbery joint. In the original Johnny 5 there was a universal joint so I could try and print one of those although it's going to be very small. The smallest part of this is 6mm in diameter. Of course I could use a radio control part from a car or a boat or something. Uh, but I really wanted to make flexible joints out of Ninja Flex. So these pieces make up the actual rotation. It will become clearer once I've printed them and put them together. Uh, basically this is the main base that's got the receptacles in for the two cylinders. And it's also got these hub things. So in the bottom of this is a taper. Um, and this piece which has screw holes in the bottom screws down to the next piece below. So this whole piece basically rotates on here. In the top there's another taper and another tapered piece which fits face down in there. So these two pieces on the left are basically screwed together and they, they basically pinch between the two tapers in here to make a hub for it to rotate on. There's also this piece which goes straight on top and that's where the flexible neck joint I just showed you fits straight in there. So these are the pieces that make up the next cylinders and the joints. So there's one main cylinder here. Um, these are originally hydraulic cylinders. I'm not having a hydraulic system. Basically it's going to be cable operated. So there's go this is a, a, a normal sort of cylinder that you'd get that looks a bit like a shock, a shock absorber. This little piece rides in there and there's going to be a metal bolt um, which only has thread at one end and the rest of it is smooth. So that's effectively the plunger piece and that is the end cap which is eventually going to be glued on. Again I've used um, a slopey piece there that's slightly tapered so that that fits in there neatly. And these two pieces again in red are the Ninja Flex pieces. So this one goes on the bottom of the main upper face plate or the head plate, the 
first piece I showed you and that allows for the bolt to be slotted into it and this piece couples onto the very thin end of this cylinder and then it goes into the base piece that had the lower mountings for the cylinders in. So you'll notice there's a hole in here the aim of that is to pull a string to pull the plunger and there's going to be a spring in this cylinder which pushes it outwards and a, a string operated down a Bowden, well a Bowden cable which is a, a string in a tube which pulls the plunger down. So that's the plan. So let's uh, try and print some of these parts out and see what they look like. So here are all my 3D printed parts, which have all been printed successfully. So let's have a look at them. We've got the main support piece there that the cylinder bottoms um, fit into, and that piece rotates on this hub. So that fits in the bottom, and that's got pilot holes in, ready to go into the next section down. And that's gripped by the other section that I was explaining, which is this other tapered piece, which will screw on that way up and that fits into the taper in the top, so that drops down in there and it screws into this piece so that that makes a rotating thing. I've got a key on there which is for my one toothed belt because it's not going to turn more than 180 degrees so we can print a rubber belt and this can be turned with a servo but it only needs one notch in the belt and one notch in the piece. The next section up from that is this piece which is the flexible joint so that's a ninja flex joint that bends all the way round. So um, that's Ninja Flex for this part. I actually attack the top with a hot air gun, which is why it's slightly shiny and a bit raggedy where I've pushed this piece on because it's a very tight fit. The bottom is forced into this block with pliers um, and that then sits on top like so. On top of that is this plate, which will go on there. And that in fact is uh, what the whole head mounts on. And that piece has obviously the mounting for the main neck joint and the two front mountings for the cylinders. So I've got these other rubber pieces which mount on there. So that will provide a flexible joint for the bolt which attaches like so. Those have got a small pilot hole in the bottom so they'll be screwed on. It's fairly dense rubber but as it gets thinner of course on this part it's more flexible. So looking at the cylinders themselves, I left an access hatch in there so I can see what's going on. Basically a spring fits in like so, and then we've got our plunger on our sliding cap. So this plunger piece is screwed onto the threaded piece of this bolt, which is smooth apart from the very end. And that plunger then operates inside the cylinder. And with any luck, I should be able to pull a string in this hole to pull the plunger back. Um, and that's how it's going to work. So we'll pull that string down a tube. Attached to the end of the cylinder are one of these other rubber pieces, which just fits on like that. And that fits into the base there to make a flexible joint. So all of these pieces are going to be glued together. I could have printed some of them in one go um, with the dual extruders. I've actually made the rubber pieces separately. Some of these are, they're not perfect prints. Um, as the piece gets thinner, basically it bends and it makes it very hard to get a perfect print. So I've had to attempt those a couple of times. That's why I've made them separately. But we're going to glue these pieces together using Gorilla Glue, which is recommended by the manufacturer of Ninja Flex rubber filament. So let's start putting those pieces together. I need to cut these bolts down when I know how long they are to make them exactly the right length. And we'll see what we've got. I'm just stringing up the actuators. So I'm using this fishing line, which is incredibly tough. I think it's a 50 pound braking strain, which is about 22 kilograms. 
Um, it's doubled up as well, so I'm just showing you how I'm stringing up one of these. So the string goes through the little hole in the cylinder, through the spring, and then what I've done is drilled a tiny hole in there. So the string goes through there and it just loops around the shaft. So pulling all that together, obviously, if we just hold that on there, then pulling this operates the actuator. And in fact, the other one I've put together and I've glued the end cap on with a bit of acetone. It's ABS, so we can just chemically weld the end cap on. And if we shove this string back through here, so I've got a bit of plastic tubing attached and the string comes out of the other end. So if we pull that tight, then we can see the actuator operating. Haven't got quite as much movement as I'd have liked, um, but that's good enough for the model. So the other end of this will be pulled by a servo. Here is my base and the tapered piece attached together. That screw screws in further and that goes inside there. So let me put that together. So that piece rotates nicely in there and I can't pull that out. So once that's screwed down, that means this thing will be nice and stable and there'll be no wobble. The next part is to insert these cylinders into these flexible pieces, which plug in, which are again Ninja Flex pieces, and that gives me lots of flexibility. So the cap of this has got some holes in, and I made holes in this as well that align in the top four corners. I was going to use screws, but actually I haven't got any long enough and small enough, so I've just cut a couple of bits of short metal which act as locating pegs. So that will plug straight in. And then for all of the ABS parts, I'm just using acetone to weld them together and a small paintbrush. So we just literally wet the ends with acetone. Acetone uh, will dissolve the ABS. So it's a great way to stick multiple 3D printed parts together. Only works with, acetone, uh, with uh, ABS, doesn't work with Ninja Flex and it doesn't work with PLA. So we'll just wet all the corners. You can dissolve um, ABS in acetone as well to make an extra paste if you need to fill any gaps, but these bits are pretty good. So we'll stick that down, just push the metal down and leave that in there. And then for the Ninja Flex to ABS parts, I'm going to use some of the Gorilla Glue to stick them together. So we should be able to plug in both our cylinders now. So looking a bit more like Johnny Five's neck. All right, so I've screwed this down to a piece of plastic so it stands up on its own. It's not fixed on very well, but you can see it freely rotates. Um, it's just got two screws holding it, so um, that's pretty good. I've inserted these uh, the cylinders there, and obviously the top head plate, I've attached the two rubber things. And I've just put a screw straight through and they've gone into the it's gone into the rubber and they're held on pretty well. So that piece fits on there. There's again four screw holes that align. And then I just need to make sure these next cylinders, I need to cut down the bolts so they fit in. Um, these are obviously the extreme of their, their stroke, although it's not very big. So I just need to make sure that that head is pointing up slightly so it can pull down a bit and then it will tilt sideways. So I just need to cut those bolts down. <laughs> So there's the whole assembly with Johnny Five's head balanced on top. I'm going to take that off before it falls off because it is only just balanced on. There are screw holes to mount it, but I need to uh, spray up this plate to be the same colour as the head before I do so. Um, there's also a lip light box that fits underneath, which is um, a light up VU meter that shines when Johnny Five speaks. But I need to come back to that as, long, uh, as well as the missing head details. So um, this thing rotates, which will be a separate function driven by a servo and a belt on the base. But I can show you the tilting motion with the cylinders that I've put on today. So if I pull both these, you should find it tips forward. And if I pull one of them, 
it will tip to one side or the other. So there we go. Right, so that's the end of the video for today. Next time I'm going to probably be starting at the bottom and working on the track drive. So check out for future videos in my channel. Make sure you subscribe for updates. Also add me on Twitter at xrobotsuk. I'm going to be engaging with Twitter more and I'll try and follow everyone back if you add me. Also check out my crowdfunding campaign at patreon.com slash xrobots for some exclusive rewards, including access to a live broadcast with me.